Hey everybody, Eric here, and we're back at it again. We got another video for you guys today. Uh, it's Monday morning. It's right before we open. Uh, no one else is here, but we're gonna open just a little bit. But I want to make a quick video. I'm like, I gotta make a video. I want to show you guys um, something pretty cool, actually, about motherboards, or just actually a basic uh, way to troubleshoot and diagnose like a motherboard if you do get it in for like a repair shop like us or something like that. So I'm gonna show you guys real quick. Um, let's go ahead and actually look at this because this is what's actually important here. All right, so you have to have this. You have to get this uh, up and working. You got to read the schematic. You have to understand everything that's going on here, every part of everything. And, and I'm just kidding. We're not going to be doing that. That's the whole point of actually making this video is to kind of avoid something like that. I mean, not all the time you're actually going to have a schematic anyway, probably actually almost every single time. And even if you do, you still want to use your brain because the brain's the most important thing. And we're going to show you a quick thing to actually look at boards and how to use your brain and how to actually diagnose these properly. So uh, let's get right actually into it. I hope my camera is going to be good enough because I actually just want to show this more over the camera here. Um, please give me a second. So first we want to check our main power rail and our main power rail is coming from where? It's coming from our power supply. So if you have a very small charger, even, uh, uh, it's all tangled here. So if I have a small charger made like this one, this is a nice little Asus one. Um, we're going to go ahead and plug it in. And we, we obviously want to check to see if there's a problem with the DC jack here. Because the DC jack, uh, come on, God, focus, focus. So we're going to focus here. So this is the DC jack, and this is where you're going to plug in your charger. So if we plug in the charger, if there is damage here, that's going to be number one thing, right? Um, if, uh, if we're not sure what's going on, this is where we want to start because this is where the power goes in. The power goes in here. There should be something going on, right? So we always want to start here. We want to make sure that we are getting... Our voltage coming in um, we can check that sometimes it's a little bit hard to tell sometimes this little pin in here could be a little bit damaged it could be very very slight but it can be damaged there too so what we're going to do is i'm going to go ahead and check to make sure that this is actually plugged in and make sure that we're getting a power our power rail our power is coming in here so we should be getting like what 19 and a half volts hope you guys can see that there because <laughs> it's a little bit dark it's the sun went down for like a second there so i'm going to hold the ground and now i'm going to go ahead and see if i can get some type of power is power coming in so we see that power is coming in. If you look at my voltmeter, we're getting like 19, which is, whoops, hold it for a second, but we're getting about 19 volts. So we're getting our 19, and that's a really good sign. That means because the voltage is actually coming in um, and we're getting it directly through the DC jack here and it's going to the power connector. The power connector is fine. Most of the time, that's not gonna be your major problem unless there's physical damage. Now, when we flip this over, we're gonna see something uh, else that's actually here. And it's really interesting. And uh, you'll see this is a very typical for most boards is there's usually um, when we have some type of power input here, right? We have usually like uh, the first two ones actually are here. If you notice, there's usually like two MOSFETs here and there's usually like a current resistor there. We just wanna follow the path of electricity. That's kind of the whole point here. If this is a problem here, then obviously there's not gonna be electricity the rest of the board. So we can be checking about the same thing here because you see these little two? Two of these little two MOSFETs. So if I measure here, it should be 19 as well, right? So I should be measuring here, and we see we're getting 19 there, right? And um, you're gonna have these throughout kind of the whole thing. Now we can kind of follow this power. We can follow this main uh, power rail that goes throughout a lot of these areas here, because you're gonna be seeing other ones that are similar to these. These are called MOSFETs, and you're gonna be we can follow them because there's power supplies throughout the whole entire side of the board here, right? And how can we know? A real easy way to really know is there's usually little power packs. And the power packs everywhere, there are coils, and there's usually like two MOSFETs, coils, two MOSFETs, coils, two MOSFETs. They could be delivering power through RAM. They could be delivering power through CPU, GPU, and other areas. So if we follow it all the way through there, right, we should be getting pretty much the same thing throughout the whole entire board. And again, it's similar to every single area. And uh, if we follow, let's just say we're gonna, I'm gonna go aim for these two right here, right? There's two MOSFETs there. Let's go ahead and check to see if that's getting 19 as well. Hitting our 19 again. Okay, so we could pick one and we pick two. We can probably do the same thing throughout all of them if they're healthy <laughs> and we'll get our 19 there. So you can kind of follow the whole path along there. If, they, if this isn't getting 19 to where the main power rail is going, then obviously you're not gonna get this thing to turn on. Now, once we're done kind of like just checking the major power rails there, we can, we can check this one chip, and this chip is very popular. It's usually the most bigger, biggest one you can usually see. It's very obvious to always see, and this is the startup chip. Uh, you can call it the Super I.O. There's lots of other names for it, too. It has lots of uh, things. Now, um, what it does is it usually runs like a microprogram 
um, to make sure that the, the CPU is going to be good, right, that the GPU is good, and everything else looks to be good, RAM's good, before uh, you actually get a nice display. Now, if there's a short to here, it's going to be a big problem because obviously, what, it's not going to turn on. And a lot of other problems, not just from having those, uh, the main power of, that main power of isn't present, that's one of the major issues. Now, this is also another big issue if this isn't getting um, its, vol its correct voltage there. Now, there are lots, if you can see, lots of uh, capacitors usually around this area. Uh, we want to be looking for like 3.3 volts, uh, usually through some of these areas, or there could be a short. Um, this main chip could be shorted, or there could be a short that's going um, around this area, or it's not going to allow this thing to turn on, right? So we could check here. A good way to check to see if this usually is pretty good, um, we can actually just measure one of the capacitors around the area, right? Okay, so if I just actually just check a random one here, if I hold this here, maybe check one of the capacitors around here, we should probably get like our 3.3, right? And this one we are getting our 3.3, so that looks to be pretty good. Sometimes there's another place you can check as well because obviously, right, this, if this area looks to be clean, you have to measure, there's other ways you can do it, but we also wanna check other ones too. And we can check uh, this one here, if we check actually the middle pin here, we should be getting our 3.3 as well, that looks to be good. And another one, because this chip needs to be on um, pretty much all the time, even if there is, or at least ready, to be on all the time because we have power inco input coming from our uh, our adapter here. So another way to be doing it because it's ready, it's like, hey man, I'm waiting for that power button to be pushed, right? So we do have a power button actually up here. Okay, so we're gonna check this up here because this is our power button. And if we hit the power button, right, it's going to do all the checks, it's gonna run the program, it's gonna do everything else there. So we need to check that this is gonna be fine because this should be getting our 3.3 as well. So if we go over here and we're saying we're getting our same thing over here. So actually this board actually looks to be pretty good for at least the most part for the basic checks for it because we're getting actually um, our main power rail there and then we're also getting our, our uh, starter chip seems to be actually not shorted out or at least it looks to be pretty good for the most part there. Now that is pretty much most of the time when you have a problem with it, like a basic board, something like this. Um, Obviously, you need to check to see a uh, visual inspector too, if there's like something blown obviously there, that's gonna be a problem. Um, when you have a main, because this, the main power rail is again, the most important thing because it is the highest amount of voltage, right? It's the highest amount of current going through this whole thing. If you plug it in from the, the power supply and then you plug it through here, you need to check your main power rail to make sure that you get your 19.5 volts. Now, a, l a lot of times because uh, this starts about right here, right? When you have your MOSFETs here and you have your current resistor there, this is a big point of failure because it's just so much uh, that's happening right here, just right at the start of the injection of uh, the current, right? The current is just, it's so strong that, that usually you see problems with maybe capacitors along that line, or you can see problems with MOSFETs, a lot of things. So that's just a base, basic little thing to be talking about there. All right, guys, and that's just the basic um, troubleshooting, easy way to diagnose, really, I guess you could say easy way to diagnose. Um, most troubles, most faults on a, just a typical motherboard there. Um, that's outside of obviously if there's like liquid damage or if somebody opened it and soldered something, oh man, we don't want to be going down that one. That's a totally different video. But it's just a basic way to basically check, do basic checks on a, a motherboard to see if you're having the typical faults of a normal motherboard there. Um, and yeah, so that's really about it. Um, please do like actually if you enjoyed this video. If you want me to do a MacBook board, I could be doing that one as well. I think that'd be great for actually another video. It's gonna be a similar type of process, similar type of ideas going through the main power rail there. But if you're interested in seeing that, definitely leave a like and let me know down below if you wanna see that one too, because I can make another separate one for that one. Um, otherwise, thanks a lot for watching guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. We do lots of day recoveries, liquid spills, board level repairs, you can see that. Check out all the stuff on our channel and we have everything else if you're interested on our channel because it's great. We got lots of cool things. So hope you guys enjoy watching. It's a beautiful Monday today. Where whatever day you guys watch this on, I'm sure it's a beautiful day there as well. And take care. Hope you guys enjoy. Bye.